Hello. I've covered this topic before, but it's so important and it's sometimes so hard to actually grasp that I thought maybe we'll do one more video on this particular one. So the question is, how do we create high quality 3D models no matter the site in question? And this is something that I've actually grappled to learn over the last few years that we've been in the drone industry, but it's still one of the most commonly asked questions hey, my facade doesn't look as great as I would want to on my building. Or, hey, um, the site came out okay, but there are all these sort of issues and patches in my data set when it comes to the 3D. So in this particular video, what I want to do is I want to really explain what creates a high quality 3D model and what you need to do on the capturing of the data to get really high quality results. Let's have a look. Hey everyone, I'm Varun from Hammer Missions, and in this particular video, we're going to do a deep dive into what makes a high quality 3D model using drones and what are the things that you need to really focus on. Right, let's get started. So, one of the things that's really important when you're capturing any data with drones is to actually think about what you're capturing. I think a lot of the times people get really hard set into rules without really understanding the basics of photogrammetry, which is what's used to create these 3D models. So if you understand the basics of photogrammetry and if you understand the site you are capturing, you, you will be able to actually create really high quality 3D models because you not only understand the process you need to follow, but you understand why you need to follow that process in the first place. Right, so just a very quick introduction to photogrammetry and what it's all about. So photogrammetry is essentially a technique that's used in software to create 2D maps and 3D models from drone images or any kinds of images. And what this technique really does is that essentially it takes the images and it matches the common features in these images to be able to estimate the 3D position of each one of those features uh, in a 3D space. And in that 3D space, you're able to create these point clouds which are essentially representations of those features in 3D, and that allows you to create structure from motion, motion of the camera. And so this is the reason why it's so important for your images to have overlap, because when your images have overlap, the software can actually match all those key features and stitch everything together. So that's the basics of photogrammetry that you always need to keep in your mind when you're capturing this data. Now, let's get into some practical implementation steps. So when you're capturing data, you need to really, really consider what is it that you're capturing. And depending on that, you're able to actually make the best decision that allows you to get a good trade-off between the quality of the model and the time or the efficiency on site to be able to capture that data because the two go hand in hand. You know, you can't always just capture every single thing. You've got to be efficient as well. So let's start by looking at open areas or construction sites or solar parks. So when you're looking at construction sites or solar parks, which are relatively flat areas that you want to capture, all you need to do is fly a single grid pattern, a lawnmower pattern, or whatever name you want to give it, a mapping mission, on top of these single open, open area sites. And you want to ensure that that grid pattern has images taken with at least 70% overlap and 80% if possible. So this one is super simple. You don't have to overcomplicate it. If it's a relatively flat site, like a construction site, or relatively flat site, like um, construction site during the earthworks phase, uh, I should mention. So this is before you've got any built structures on site. Uh, or let's say a solar park, anything that's relatively flat, you want to capture it with a single lawnmower pattern. End of story. You can get closer to the site if you want to get high details in terms of the output model, but you don't have to overcomplicate it. That's pretty much it. Right, now things get more interesting when once you've got built structures on site. Now it really depends what built structures have you got. So let's say you are capturing a building, a single building. So this building essentially has, um, let's say it's a not so tall building, but it's a relatively flat building in terms of the height, but it's, let's say it's wider than it is actually taller. So I'm going to put some images on the screen so that you can actually see what I mean. 
For these particular types of buildings, which is basically a single building that you want to capture, what you need to think about is that you need to capture the roof and you need to capture the facade and maybe you need to capture the ground as well if that's what you're really interested in. So for single buildings, all you have to do is think about the roof and think about the facades and you need to capture both of those and bring it all together into one unified 3D model. How do you do that? Well, you plan your roof inspection or you plan your roof flight plan, which is a single grid flight plan most of the times. You can go for double grid if you really want to. So basically a single grid lawnmower pattern or a double grid lawnmower pattern on the top which essentially allows you to capture all of the images on the top. Now for the facades, what you need to do is you need to actually take your drone and orbit around the orbit around the building. Now, depending on the shape of the building, it's not going to be a perfect circle because if you have to think about it, you need to maintain a constant distance from each one of the facades. And so what you really need is something we call lateral capture in hammer missions, which is essentially you want to be able to capture each one of those facades and follow the geometry of that or the boundary of that building, maintaining a, a fixed distance from the facade. And you want to bring that facade and the top all together into one project. So that's the solution for a single building. Right, moving on to, let's say, a tall building. So when you're doing a tall building, it gets a bit more complicated because now you've got a structure that you can't really capture can't really go around in one orbit or one lateral capture to see all of the facades. So what do you do? Well, similar workflow to uh, a relatively short building, but you've got to add one more step. So you've got to capture the roof as you normally do. You've got to capture one row of oblique images or orbit around the top. Now, because this is a tall building, you generally have the roof captured as a roof flight plan, and then you would have an orbit around the top and then you would want to capture the facade um, separately going either around the building or each one of those four facades or more than that facades separately but really important that you get good overlap between all of those three data sets so that you can model all of it perfectly into one 3d model so that's the process for a really tall building now from here we're going to move into towers now towers are slightly different Generally with towers, what you find is that you've got a structure which gets narrower as it goes to the top. And as, as, as unlike a building, you can actually fly around it in orbits. So with towers, it's actually somewhat more simple. You just fly around in orbits around that tower. Sometimes you can do orbits going up and down as well. So you can combine, so to speak, these two different types of grids. So you've got your orbit grid going up and down, going around the tower first and then down um, and then or you can do an up and down the tower as you go along so both of those can be combined and with towers one of the things you really want to make sure is you get very little to no horizon in your images so your images should generally have a gimbal angle pointing down and that's what's going to allow you to be able to have really high quality models because you're actually generally directly looking at the subject once again you've got to get high overlap and you've got to make sure that all of the images have high quality in them in terms of the exposure levels and, or, and whatnot. So I think generally speaking, from a tower point of view, you want to maintain that flow of capture. Right, and finally, what about if you have somewhat of a large area, let's say a construction site with built structures or generally like an industrial site with many buildings or something where you've got both flat ground and buildings on top of it. Now for those particular areas, You've got to think about, surely you need the full overview of the entire site, but then you also need the details of facades on where the buildings exist. So that's where you need to use two or three different flight plans. You need a flight plan for the top, for basically covering the whole area, which could be a single grid lawnmower pattern, going back to our very first construction site. So you take that particular single grid lawnmower pattern and then you fly it on the top. And then what you do is you also fly orbits or you fly lateral capture or facade missions around these particular buildings. So you combine the facade missions for the buildings and you combine the lawnmower pattern. You can do it all on one altitude if you like, or if you wanted to really get details on every single building, you can have overlapping orbits that actually go down, up and down the building 
and you can combine all of that into one data set. Whatever you do, just make sure you have good overlap between all of the different flight plans that are in the data set. What you don't want to do is manual some bits and fly other bits automated and just hope that the software can stitch everything together because that's not a good strategy. Right. And finally, I'm going to come to structures like bridges. So bridges are also really interesting because they've got the top deck, something like, you can think of it like, you know, similar to what a roof would represent, but they're again, long linear structures. So you want to cover the roof depth first. And one of the things you can do with, with bridges is that once you're actually capturing the bridges, not only are you capturing looking straight down in the nadir position, but you can add an oblique angle to the sides of the bridges as you're capturing them so that you're able to actually get both the facade of the bridge, so the under deck of the bridge in some sense, and the top deck in one picture. Um, and if you want, you can add terrestrial images as well for the areas where you really want to add detail. But once again, bridges are complicated. You've got to make sure they have overlap between all of those three components. And really, if you think about it, most structures that you capture, you just want to be able to, from a general approach perspective, divide it up into two or three flight plans. And generally speaking, if you can capture the whole structure in one flight plan, that's perfect. But most build structures, you won't be able to do that. So what's really important is that if you have two or three different flight plans, so if you have a flight plan for the roof and you have a flight plan for the facade and you have the flight plan for going around it, you've got to make sure they all overlap with each other. And there's a lot of commonality between all those images because fundamentally you need those images to have those good overlapping features so that the software can stitch it all together and create those beautiful 3D models that you can show to your end clients. So that's me going through the very basics of the geometry you need to have for good high quality 3D models. Now there are many other things that you need to take care of when you're creating high quality 3D models. The geometry and the structure and the overlap, that's sort of like the fundamentals. But then you've also got to think about, have you got the right exposure on your images? You don't want to have some images that are underexposed and other images that are overexposed. So constant exposure is really important. GSD, how close or far you are from your structure and whether you can see the details you want to see is also really important. You've also got to make sure that you are not using many different types of focal lens and many different types of cameras that are really hard for the software to stitch all together. And you've also got to think about, well, what is it that I'm trying to achieve at the end of the day? And would my 3D model be able to show that at the end of the day for the use case? So those are some of the things that I cover in other videos. And I'm going to link you to those videos now so that you can go ahead and watch some of those as the continuation to this video. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a like and do check out some of these other videos. We'll see you there. Thanks for listening. We're Hammer Missions and we'll see you in the next video for Knowledge Hub.